Well, we're going to visit uh, today with Latrell Pollard, who is the cornerbacks coach for the Golden Eagles and a guy that probably doesn't need an introduction, outstanding uh, linebacker for the Golden Eagles, and he's been here before as uh, one of our assistant coaches. And uh, Latrell, what's it like to be back at uh, Southern Miss, a place where you sort of grew up as a player and as an assistant coach? You know, it's a great feeling to be back home. You know, I consider this place home to me. You know, coming here as a 17-year-old, 18-year-old freshman and spending most of my career in Hattiesburg, Mississippi as a young man and a grown adult and my youngest son born here. Me and my wife got married here. So, you know, this is basically home and have a chance to come back home is always exciting and it's a fulfilling uh, part of my heart. When you think back on your years at Southern Miss as, an, as a player or an assistant coach, what, what sort of pops into your mind? What do you think about when you think about those times? You know, just guys uh, fighting hard times and the celebrations after the ball game, you know, going through the Eagle Walk, coming out of Van Hall where it first started with us coming out of there and, you know, first starting such a small deal to fan base growing and the winning and people getting excited about it and, you know, Saturday mornings just smelling the good old grass you know, when I played there, and not a better feeling than being in South Mississippi. When you talk to people, they talk about the, the quote-unquote Southern Miss defense. You probably more than anybody around here knows what that means. What what Southern Miss defense mean to Latrell Pollard? You know, when you, when you say Southern Miss defense, you think of uh, 11 guys out there that's, first of all, 11 brothers. And when you step against 11 brothers that love each other like blood brothers, you know, that's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long and consistent fight. And guys just standing together and don't take no for answer. You know, finding a way at the end of the game, you know, whether we got to win it uh, on defense with a score, block kick, whatever, you want that pressure on you. I know the, the players a lot of times talk about the history of Southern Miss defense. And, of course, you were, you were a part of that. Uh, is that something when you talk to the, to the players that now – uh, that you coach, do you talk about that tradition, that uh, style of play of Southern Miss defense? Yeah, you know, you talk to them about, you know, they have something to live up to. And, you know, you don't always want to dwell on the past, but it's a it's an aiming point for those guys that we don't set the bar at this level. And if you don't want to get to this level, this is not a defense for you. From what I saw in the spring, uh, Coach Duggan's philosophy one is to, to go out there and fly around and, and have fun. Yeah, the X's and O's are important, but you got to go out there and, and make things happen. Is that kind of the way you guys approach it in the spring? Yeah, that's the way we did it. You know, the biggest thing when you're coming off of what those kids went through is they got to start back enjoying the game of football. So, you know, what Coach Duggan biggest did, he wanted them chasing the ball, flying around, and having fun. And as long as you're having fun and flying around, the win's going to come. That's the easiest part but you got to enjoy the game. What's, what was the biggest challenge uh, defensively and specifically at the, at the cornerback spot there in the, in the secondary that, that you faced going into spring football practice? Confidence. You know, at that position, uh, things can happen good or bad to you faster than any other position on the, on the football field. And, you know, you take some of those guys that have had success here in the past, and, you know, you ask them and you look at them, you talk about the biggest difference between them in the past and the previous years is it's confidence. How well do you forget what just bad happened to you and you just continue to move on? And that's the biggest thing I wanted to build in those guys that I believe in them, regardless of good things or bad things. Coach believes in you. Let's go out here and just build that confidence up. Well, you're coaching a position where that's uh... – probably the most important on the, the defensive football field. Those guys at, uh, at cornerback, uh, they're going to have some great plays. They're going to get good beat sometimes. So those guys have to always have that sort of confidence, that belief in themselves. Yeah, they do. And, you know, you talk about Darren Wilson, a guy in 2011, won a lot of games on defense. You're talking about interceptions in the end zones. People forget those things. And you go back last year and you go to watch him, you know, he's almost a, a guy that was null and void. And that was one of the biggest things when I got here and I asked him, what's the biggest difference? I, I remember you in 2011, then 2012. You're the same guy, same player. I said, it's your mindset. And we got to change your mindset because you can help us win a lot of ball games. 
the reason they won so many games in 2000 because of your play. You uh, mentioned Darren Wilson. That you've got a few guys back that uh, have had some experience that have been out there under the gun and then some, uh, some young guys who are going to get baptized a, a little bit this year. Talk about that group as a whole, your cornerbacks, and uh, who along with Darren Wilson are guys that stand out. You know, to go along with Darren, you got Kalen Reed, a guy that played here last year as a true freshman from Alabama that's uh, a real smart kid, a big corner. Uh, that's the thing I like about him. He's big, he's physical, he loves to play. And you got Ed Wilkins, uh, another guy that's young that played here last year. You know, you get to watch him film and all those guys pop up on film from last year. You know, that's the biggest thing I like about it. They had, they got playing experience. It's not like, you know, this will be their first game when we play this year. And with those three guys, and I have a few more guys that's playing and had a pretty good spring, you know, with, with them working on their own this summer. and. Coming into camp, I'm excited about three to maybe five guys that could possibly help us play win some good defense. I'll say when you get back in, in August and, and get back at work, you obviously got to have more than three guys can play out there. Is that, I guess, is one of the things you'll work on is you got to find some depth there at the cornerback spot. Yeah, you, you have to because as fast as offense is going these days, you need four to five guys and getting certain packages and uh, things like that. We have some guys, you know, you got Alex Walters that's going to be a senior that was banged up a lot last year and it came into the spring banged up. But talent-wise, he's one of the most talented guys I have. But I just hadn't seen enough of him to be able to throw him in that in that top uh, group. But I believe he has the ability to be the fourth guy. In this era of spread offenses, uh, more pressure than ever on the defensive football team, do you have to have guys that can do a lot of different things out there because it's hard to substitute maybe like you used to? Yeah, it is. You, it's no longer you saying I'm just strictly a corner. Uh, certain packages and stuff like that, you don't have time to sub. This guy might have to jump in and play this spot. So when you're teaching guys and when you're recruiting guys, you got they have had a high football IQ able to do more than one thing while they're out there. You uh, have been around Conference USA and, and you know it's a league where most everybody is spread out and throws the ball around. Uh, how have defenses tried to, if catch up is the right word, catch up to what offenses are doing to try to even the even the game plan a little bit? Well the biggest thing they're playing with more DBs on the field. These days the minimum uh, DBs you see on the field is five. Uh, on first down, and that used to be unheard of, you know, back in the old days playing football. But now the minimum is five DBs out there, and you could possibly see six at any present moment. On any down and distance, that used to be just a third down deal. Third and first down is no different these days in Conference USA. You'll be going up in practice day in and day out against the Golden Eagle offense, and Coach Munkin, I know, wants to play the game as fast as uh, possible. I would think that would help prepare the Golden Eagle defense to go up against uh, what Coach Munkin and his offensive staff are going to throw at you every day. Yeah, well, it's going to be really easy on Saturday because, you know, watching him through Oklahoma State and going through this spring, tempo is no. It's not going to bother us now because every day is a tempo day for us. And it's actually harder in practice because you don't have the officials going to set the ball and do all that. In practice, it's just even faster. So I think that's going to be a plus on our side of the ball where when we get to Saturday, the game actually is going to be slower to us than it is during the week. You're again, as I said, back at Southern Miss. What are you looking forward to uh, when, when it all starts back up in, in August and the, the season rolls around? What, what's Latrell Power looking forward to? I'm looking back to my first Eagle Walk, looking forward to come down Eagle Walk, looking at those, those pictures and those signs of that tradition and coming through and seeing my family here again. You know, seeing, you know, like I said, my little boy grew up a true Golden Eagle guy, seeing my family here and the first time they run out that tunnel to hear that fight song and the scene the fight song in the uh, after the game after we get that first win uh, again you know that's one thing I'll be a part of again is starting it all over again what's uh as you've gotten back and sort of gotten back on the road recruiting and and you've probably run across some people you had seen in a while what's what's one what's their response to having you back as a uh, part of the Southern Miss family, and two, what's your reaction been as you've been out and seen a lot of people maybe haven't seen in a while? You know, it's been good getting out seeing some of the high school coaches, uh, some friends of mine, you know, some of the guys I've actually played with when I was here 
is out coaching high school ball now in Mississippi. And, you know, the biggest thing they're saying, are we happy to have someone back that know what it takes, that's been through it. And when you see a child or you see an athlete not doing what Southern Miss is all about, you can pull them to the side and talk to them about it. You know, it's hard to talk to people about something you really don't know nothing about. You know, when you grow up through it and you bleed it, it's a little bit different when you talk to a guy. And right now, the, the, the football field at the Rock is uh, torn up. They're, they're replacing the turf. But I would think uh, when that first home game rolls around, and you've been in the Rock as a Golden Eagle and on the other side a couple of times, I bet your heart will be pumping uh, pretty good when you run out there on the, it, the it Rock will. for a first Saturday. It, it's, it's pumping, you know, just to think about it, the excitement of it and see the helmet go up and the smoke go up and – you know, those guys hear the cannon go off. You know, the places I've been, I ain't hadn't heard the cannon since I left. So, you know, I'm interested and I can't wait to, to hear it again and, you know, to see the new surface that's going down and those guys hit it for the first time.